evening, Ness Committee. The Virginia Beach City Public School Board is now in session. We're in our formal meeting format. Um, I would ask my colleagues to indicate their presence on the voting board. We will uh, now proceed with a uh, moment of silence. You now stand as you are able for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll now proceed with our public awards and recognition. Mrs. Holtz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Only six schools in the entire state have a distinct honor to be recognized with the prestigious Wells Fargo a Academic Cup each year. Please join the school board in welcoming the 2015, 2016, and two-time Wells Fargo Cup honoree, Princess Anne High School. Here to accept the award are students Sammy Strom and Principal Danny Little. Presented by the Virginia High School League each year, this award recognizes the school's participation and performance in the league's state competition and activities. Recipients of the award are determined by a point system, and only six cups are presented, one to the top school in each VHSL's classifications. This is the second consecutive year that the Cavaliers have won this prestigious Award. Congratulations. Legendary basketball coach John Wooden once said that sports don't build character, they reveal it. That's what the next award is all about. Please join the school board in welcoming the recipients of the Virginia High School League's Claudia Dodson Sportsmanship Ethics and Integrity Award. First Colonial High School. Accepting the award is Principal Dr. Nancy Farrell. <laughs> Green Run High School. Accepting the award are basketball coach, PE teacher, Kenneth Harris and Principal Todd Tarkenton. Yeah. Kellum High School, accepting our student activities coordinator, Jim Moxie, and assistant principal, Carrie Pierce. <laughs> Kempsville High School, accepting the award, our student activities coordinator, Tim Wolf, and assistant principal, Melissa George. <laughs> Lansdowne High School, Accepting the award are students Jaden Curry and Ryan Charles, Student Activities Coordinator Dave Syok, and Principal Dr. Cheryl Askew. Ocean Lakes High School. Accepting the award is Principal Dr. Claire LeBlanc. Princess Anne High School. Accepting the award is Principal Danny Little. And Tallwood High School, Student Activities Coordinator Christine Anderson and Principal Jim Avila. The 
The award recognizes member schools that have established policies and procedures that make sportsmanship not only a priority, but an exception with the school and the community. I'm sorry, an expectation. Of the 39 schools across the state that received the award, eight were from Virginia Beach City Public Schools. Congratulations, everyone. Our final recognition is for Virginia Beach Schools that are 2016 Virginia Index of Performance Award winners, or VIPs. These awards are presented by Governor Terry McAuliffe and the State Board of Education to schools that exceed state and federal, federal accountability standards. Honorees are recognized in one of three categories. The first group of honorees earned the 2016 Board of Education Excellence Awards. Congratulations to Kingston Elementary and accepting our PTA President Ann Filiberti and Principal Dr. Sharon Shoebridge. Strawbridge Elementary, accepting our Assistant Principal Leanne Laundrie and Principal Jacqueline Sargent. <laughs> Thurgood Elementary, accepting our Reading Specialist Annette Conley and Principal Cheryl Zagrang. Brickell Academy at Old Donation School accepting the award are the school's Teacher of the Year, Adrian Hayes, and Principal Kelly Hedrick. <laughs> this award honors schools that met all state and federal accountability benchmarks and make significant progress toward goals for increased student achievement and expanded educational opportunities. Next, 10 Virginia Beach schools earned the 2016 Board of Education Distinguished Achievement Award. Here to accept the award are principals and a guest from each of the schools honored. Dye Elementary, fifth grade teacher Edgar Jumper, and Principal Elizabeth Bianchi. Glenwood Elementary, Tony Travado, and Principal Dr. Karen DiMaggio. <laughs> North Landing Elementary, Teacher Renee Barber, and Principal Jill Barger. Pembroke Elementary, Assistant Principal Diana, Br Diana Brown and Linda Haynes. Haynes. Linda, I know your last name is Hayes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Principal A Princess Ann Elementary, Assistant Principal Virginia O'Malley and Principal Patrick Roten. Red Mill Elementary, Assistant Principal Courtney Boyce. Three Oaks Elementary, Principal Linda Sedone. Great Neck Middle, Assistant Principal John Chowns and Principal Jean Soltner. Princess Ann Middle, Principal Dr. Alex Bergren. And Ocean Lakes High School, Dr. Claire LeBlanc. This award honors schools that met all state and federal accountability benchmarks and made progress toward the goals set by the governor and the state board. It is great seeing all of you administrators here this summer. It's almost time to get back there, though, with those kids. So, um, but anyway, thank you for everything you do, and congratulations. And please, everyone, join me in congratulating this fine group of folks.
Mr. Chairman, that concludes our recognitions for this evening. Guests, thank you for celebrating with us, and we hope you have a great rest of the summer. You may leave, or you're certainly welcome to stay for the rest of the program. <laughs> program meeting. <laughs> Entertainment. <laughs> In some cases. <laughs>
Environmental Center. Um, I thought it would be appropriate to give just a, a, a few of the highlights for those that haven't had the opportunity to uh, read the, uh, the minutes. Um, we gathered early in the morning and spent a couple hours going over sort of internal items for the board. And we talked about the uh, workshops that we have in the afternoons before our regular meetings, talked about the focus areas that the board in the coming year wanted to consider, the content of them, the substance and the format of the uh, workshops. Also talked about uh, um, some of the workshops focusing on student achievement and academic uh, progress and also some budget items. We talked about the board's <coughs> goals and uh, for the coming year in terms of the, uh, in the context of the uh, task forces that had been set in motion the year before. The discipline task force had been uh, completed, disbanded, reported out in April. <clears throat> the fair and equitable grading task force um, had reported out, and the board is now in the process working with the administration on uh, a policy adjustment uh, and reviewing uh, the regulations that will be utilized by the administration. And uh, we will have that on our agenda at the next meeting. And then also the school start times task force uh, basically decided to uh, regroup on that um, uh, in January uh, when we have uh, the new board set post uh, election <coughs> and we'll have uh, two years with the same board to potentially ride that process through to uh, a full consideration on whether to do that or not. The uh, board then also looked at some other internal items in terms of uh, uh, whether or not we wanted to have a self-evaluation process, which we might do in January. Uh, talked about the uh, training opportunities for the board in the, in the coming year and how to handle that, as well as uh, uh, a look uh, discussion of the uh, cooperative uh, legal agreement we have with the city attorney for legal services. Uh, the budget officer, uh, CFO, Mr. Ronziger, at that point, over the weekend before the retreat, we had just gotten the information about the uh, shortfall in the state uh, budget from the previous year and the potential impact it will have. And he discussed that with the board and uh, talked about, uh, then we spent in the afternoon uh, uh, an extended review of the uh, strategic plan uh, wrapped up the day by talking about sustainability which earlier in the day uh, we had an opportunity to uh, uh, we were invited by Lynn Haven River now to uh, um, go out on their uh, boat and get an idea of what our students are able to partake in terms of environmental opportunities to uh, to, to look at sustainability and their role uh, in it in the in the future. Anyway, that's um, the synopsis of the uh, what we did that day. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I made a motion to approve the minutes, but I was not there. It was a reflex, so you might want to do that Good part again. Good point. So let's take a motion. We had a actually you were a second, right? I so, was, but still, uh, I, Mrs. I read Felton, the can her, can you cover for her on seconding that? Motion. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, good catch. Um, the uh, voting board is open. And Mrs. Melnick, you've already explained your abstention. Yep. Um, the minutes are approved and adopting the agenda. We are making no adjustments to what is uh, was planned and distributed in advance. The chair want to most entertain a motion to adopt. Motion, Mr. McDonald, with a second by Mrs. Holtz. Voting board is open. The agenda is adopted. We have one item on the consent agenda. It is a an adjustment to the school board student discipline committees. Mr. Tenko and Mrs. Taylor switching committees. The 
Chair will entertain a motion to approve that item on the consent agenda. Motion, Mrs. Uh, Rye, with a second by Mrs. Anderson. Voting board is open. <coughs> and the consent agenda item is approved. Moving to the action agenda, we have personnel report, which for this meeting, and contains one administrative appointment, as well as a regular personnel report on other um, retirements and appointments, resignations. Chair will entertain a motion to approve the personnel report. Motion, Mrs. Melnick. Second, Mrs. Taylor. Voting board is open. The uh, Personnel report is approved, including that administrative appointment. Uh, Dr. Spence, would you, if they are <laughs> here, introduce not only our appointee from this evening, but those who we uh, had the opportunity to, to appoint in July. Yes, sir. Also, uh, late June, just to let you know, we're going to be here for a little bit um, <laughs> because with people in and out on vacations, we wanted to make sure we had an opportunity to recognize and introduce you all to many of our new administrative faces. So let me begin with um, uh, somebody who will be serving in a new position for us. She has served with distinction uh, for uh, quite some time in Virginia Beach as a teacher, uh, reading resource teacher, instructional specialist. Um, and most recently as the coordinator of Title I in the Department of Teaching and Learning. Tina Alsop, are you here? Could you please stand? And you all um, know that she is being um, moved into the position of director of Title I in the Department of Teaching and Learning. And along with that, she will now be overseeing our pre-K programs. And all of this was part of the transition to the VPI coming into Virginia Beach City Public Schools. And so congratulations, Dr. Alsop. I think you brought some guests with you, did you? I do. They actually were at Bush Gardens today. And they came back for this? Oh. Wow. <laughs> so I have my husband, uh, Captain Richard uh, Alsop, who was here with us. And then one of my uh, daughters, Megan Alsop, who was here. Thank you. So I get Bernard Platt to please stand. So all of you will recognize Mr. Platt. He has been here in the school division for quite some time in our human resources department, um, currently serving as a specialist. And um, you have approved recently his appointment as director of employment services, trying to fill some big shoes as Ed Jones retires and leaves us. So congratulations, Mr. Platt. Uh, John Sutton is here this evening, I believe, and John has served with distinction uh, both in the public policy sector in various roles, but also as a teacher at Bayside Middle School and most recently as a teacher in the Legal Studies Academy. And John is joining us now as the coordinator of policy and constituent services in the office of the superintendent. Congratulations. <laughs> Dr. Claire LeBlanc. Oh, John, you have you have a guest. She's sitting right next to you. I'm sorry. That's my fault. Uh, my wife, Erin, is here. Uh, Aaron, you got to stand. You got to stand. Nice to see you, Erin. Thank uh, uh, Dr. LeBlanc, could you please stand? Claire LeBlanc. So you all recognize Claire LeBlanc. She has served as a longtime teacher and coach in Virginia Beach City Public Schools and most recently has been an assistant principal at Ocean Lakes High School, and you recently approved our recommendation for her to serve as the new principal of Ocean Lakes High School. Congratulations, Claire. <laughs> and you have some guests, I believe. Could I ask Danny Little to please stand? 
I know he's here. There he is. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Little has served with distinction as a teacher in North Carolina and in Northern Virginia, most recently as an administrator in Northern Virginia and the principal of Washington Irving Middle School and Fairfax County Public Schools. And we're very excited that he's decided to come down to the beach and serve as the new principal at Princess Anne High School. Congratulations, Mr. Little. John Cosimano, I know you're here. I saw you there. You are. You all will recognize Mr. Cosimano. He has served uh, with distinction as a teacher at Princess Anne High School, a school improvement specialist, most recently as administrative assistant at Virginia Beach Middle School. And you all recently approved him to serve as the assistant principal at Green Run High School. Congratulations. <laughs> and I believe you have a guest with you. Good. Congratulations. <laughs> Tamara Cornick, I think I saw you here. There you are. <laughs> She's excited, can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> you all know that Ms. Cornick has served as a teacher at Bayside Middle School, a school improvement specialist. Most recently, she served as administrative assistant at Kempsville Middle School, and you have uh, recently approved her appointment as assistant principal at Kempsville Middle School. Congratulations. And I believe you have guests. Congratulations. Thank you all for being here. Now, you know, if you don't stand up, we can't see you. So you're just, you, I'm sorry, you have to stand up so we can say hi. <laughs> I mean, we could see you with the orange shirt, but <laughs> the little. <laughs> Can I ask Nicholas Coldiron to please stand up? So Mr. Coldiron has served as a teacher in Virginia Beach City Public School, as a teacher down in Gwinnett County, Georgia. Most recently, he's been serving as a teacher at Plaza Middle School, and you all have uh, recently approved our recommendation for him to serve as the assistant principal at Lynn Haven Middle School. Congratulations, sir. And. You have you have lots of guests. Talk to us about your guests. That's all right. Um, if I could ask Octavia Serlis to please stand up. Now, Octavia has served as an avid teacher here in Virginia Beach, a school improvement specialist, and most recently as administrative assistant at Bayside Middle School. And I am pleased that this evening you have approved our recommendation for Octavia to serve as the assistant principal at Corporate Landing Middle School. Congratulations. <laughs> and you have some guests. Congratulations. <clears throat> and last, but certainly not least, if I could ask Leanna Landry to please stand up. And so she has been serving as a teacher here in Virginia Beach at Tallwood Elementary School. And uh, at a recent meeting, you approved our recommendation for her to serve as assistant principal at Strawbridge Elementary School. Congratulations. And I know you've got a very small guest with you, but I think you have some others. Congratulations. <laughs> now, we say this every time and we say it's sort of in jest, but thank you to all of the family members and guests who are here supporting these candidates. It is not an easy job to be in administration and they will need all of your love and support as we move forward. So thank you all for being here. Congratulations to each and every one of you, Mr. Chairman, That that is it.
Chairman, my, Madam Vice Chairman, School Board Members, and Dr. Spence, I'm Cami Lunetti, I'm School Board Legal Counsel. Tonight I have bylaws for you and certain policy revisions. We looked at these at the last school board meeting. There are roughly about 45 bylaws you were looking at, two appendixes. For those of you that don't really want to hear about us talk about bylaws, you won't be rude if you want to leave, okay? <laughs> Hey, you sit down. I'm just stretching. So empty. All right. We looked at the bylaws last time. There were roughly about 47 bylaws and two appendixes. Significant of the bylaws are, are really just bylaw 118, which changed, slightly changed the procedure for how you go through your annual election of chairman. All it talked about was that we, if there were more than and four, three candidates, we were going to go ahead and use the electronic voting procedures. Other than that, there were just minor changes made to them. We did incorporate the concern as to what was defined as scrivener's changes, which are going to be minor grammatical changes, errors in the law, nothing significant. Should it be significant, it will be brought back to the school board, having first gone through the policy committee. I have not received any any comments concerning changes needed to the bylaws at this time, so we're not, we've not brought anything forward. The other three um, policies, which are our B2, 415 had to do with personnel records. It was an old, outdated bylaw that we, a policy that we needed to change. There are significant definitions, but nothing that I think would be of concern to the school board. Policy 5-7 dealt with the non-discrimination, non-harassment of students. We amended this significant in last September. The only change in this particular policy had to do with how you would handle investigations involving employees, that it would start first with the Department of School Leadership and with the assistance of human resources. Policy 715 has to do with the distribution and announcement of outside communications. There was a change in the policy effective July 1 having to do with Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts having authorization to distribute um, different communication through the schools. We have always allowed that in school division. Um, we've had several policies that deal with outside organizations, particularly with the scouts groups. And we went ahead and authorized that, um, a little bit clearer in there, that those that information would come through the Department of School Administration. But again, that's just to be consistent with law that went in effect on July 1. I have not received any comments from school board members or school administration concerning any changes to these, so I believe they will be remain effective as they were published. And I'm free to answer any questions you have about the policies or bylaws. Ms. McLeod. Thank you. And I've got them organized here to try to be efficient. Um, really, when it comes to just the chairman, vice chairman, thank you for the group to working on that because that will not be an area of contention this January. That's good. Um, for bylaw 130, um, which was on uh, the um, – had to do with amending the bylaws, can you tell me – when it says obvious area, er, error, how do we, you know, it may not be so obvious. I mean, what does that really mean? It I want to make sure I'm. And we actually had this in one where we had bylaw, we had one bylaw, and we actually published the wrong bylaw under there. It, the change that needs so to be So it's something blatant, like, yeah. We've had um, 128 was not updated. You amended that in December. It needed mm -hmm. to be updated, so we just corrected that right. on there. I would not allow anything significant to come okay. without going before policy committee. In On number 148, which had to do with decorum, order, school board meetings, et cetera, letter C has been stricken out, and that was where it, it mentions that when, like, non-agenda item folks are coming up that we can't speak to them, and I didn't know why that was taken out. It actually uh, also um, dealt with the fact that what they could and couldn't discuss during some of those meetings on there, um, about, talking about comments. There was a Supreme Court case, a Virginia Supreme Court case that came out earlier this year that said that you could not restrict what the um, what the individuals were talking about. That was a violation of First Amendment speech on there. This has a fairly long history with the school division. There were, um, oh gosh, about 15, 20 years ago, you had some um, cases where people came up to speak on them. We had actually taken some cases up that involved the Virginia Beach School Board, so we had put some limitation on 
uh, what people could speak about, which particularly had to do with either personnel matters or student disciplinary matters, which we felt would not be appropriate if they were things pending before the school board. The Virginia Supreme Court spoke to that in a case earlier this year, so I've gone ahead and pulled that out so that you are now consistent with the okay. law in Virginia. Um, and I think this is my last one, um, but the in the personnel <clears throat> records, how come applicant was taken out of everything? Well, I think that what we're looking at another policy that hasn't come before you. We're still working on okay. the Section 4 policies that we felt personnel policies would apply just to those persons who are formally employees of the school division. We're still working through the Section 4 policies. We've only brought you about a third of them at this point, and okay. so that will show up later So that on. will show up somewhere else. Okay. I'm sorry. I was wrong. It, um, I'd had more. Um, in the 5.7 five five under students, non-discrimination and non-harassment of students, I found it interesting that in the line of all of the things we don't discriminate against, you know, race, color, religion, and goes on and on, that we left veteran status in there for students. Is that for consistency? I don't know many too many 16-year-olds because they're not really allowed Actually, to. Actually, you have adult students. You have adult So is it students. for the Adult Learning Center? Is that it the that It can be, or? Uh, yes. And you do actually have adult students that come back to the Adult Learning Center. We have students, believe it or not, that are actually over in the, um, the jail. So we can okay. have adults in there in some of our uh, career and technical programs. And at the risk of criticism, I, I personally never like to put a list of what we won't discriminate against because I feel that someone is going to be left out. So a very, so I wrote a few things in here. Do we need to include socioeconomic status? Do we need to put in culture? Well, do we need to put dress or appearance? The reason you're putting these in here is that these have been either defined, uh, and that we're looking at policy 5-7, session section B. These are defined by the Virginia Human Rights Act as protected classes, or there are other laws that specifically make these um, uh, these areas, um, what we call protected classes, or mm -hmm. if they're not a protected class in the Virginia Human Rights Act, there is some other law that lends them certain protection. So that's why we've gone ahead and put these in here. We don't define out other things on that. They can be handled if you're harassed or if someone mm -hmm. is in the student context, depending on how they, if they harassed you, they made fun of you, if they assaulted you, those would be handled under the other status. What I'm actually giving protections to non-harassment are those things that you're required by law to give protections to. Okay, and then on um, who acts as an investigator on a complaint, this is in the same one, number two, on this at C2. Um, I'm just curious where we've added in uh, um, where the um, division agent, volunteer, invitee, the principal or designee will act as an investigator in the purpose of investigating allegations of discrimination, all these things. Um, because it, it no longer is going to go straight to um, human resources and those type of things. But we don't establish a time frame in there. Is that an understood somewhere else? Is this not the right place for it? Is how long it takes them where they have to go? The principal should consult the Department of Human Resources, employee relations, those kind of things. Does it, does, does it not believe... require a time frame or did I miss it? It just seemed like that would be some, there should be some kind of rule you must tell them by. Actually, it's in investigation D. Within three business days, a complainant will. Okay. They plan, I missed that. That point, the complaint receives um, a notification on there. So, yeah, I do believe it's. Okay, gotcha. Business. Yeah, because when is taking out promptly? Okay. Okay. And. Last one, really, really last one. This is 715 Community Relations. This is about the Girls and Boy Scouts and outside organizations in C, uh, 715C. It says for the distribution of literature. Um, it mentions that, out, that what we were adding is outside organizations seeking to distribute communications to more than one school or school administration site will submit the proposed communication to the Office of Media and Communications for verica verification and distribution to the various sites. I guess the question I have is, we, if they are hitting, are the, um, how are we letting the people, I'll read exactly, how do they know they need to do this? How do we check it? Um, or is it really truly okay if they go one by one? They can always go one by you? one mm -hmm. um, uh, there, but what we were concerned about in this particular one was that if, mm -hmm. let's say the Girl Scouts want to do the membership drive will be September 15th mm -hmm. at this point, rather than potentially risk some schools saying yes, some saying no, 
we would send it in to uh, meeting communications and they would say this is okay and they would send it all the principals this has already been approved and it just fine to send it out it, okay rather than um, potentially have it being held up by one particular principal uh, and that allowed that, that that to be taken care of this way the principals don't have to take the time to determine if it's appropriate or not it's already been taken care of by meeting communications so organizations such as that they will know in advance that's our procedure so dr dr spence you want to answer that please yeah well the idea here is to systematize it right yes yeah. and so the way that we'll make sure that that happens and how they would know uh -huh. is that we'll go through our principles first we'll train them on the new policy okay. and then they'll be basically they'll somebody will come and say so i'd like to distribute this here and the principal will say well if you're going to do it anywhere else you need to go to community and communications Thank you very much. And, and Dr. Spence met this afternoon with the two groups. So, okay. No further questions? Yeah. Any other questions for Mrs. Linetti? <coughs> Seeing none, the chair will entertain a motion to approve the bylaws that are on the agenda in mass, the bylaw amendments. Motion, Mrs. McLeod, and a second by Mrs. Holtz. Voting board is open. They are approved. We have nothing on the information agenda. Do we have any reports from our standing committees? In summertime. That uh, concludes our formal meeting. We do have some, uh, Mrs. Felton. Absolutely, go ahead, Mrs. Felton. At this time, I would like to thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I would like to take this moment to thank Superintendent Dr. Aaron Spence for extending an invitation to the entire school board to attend a first ever historic event, the Regional Two Excellence Through Equity Conference. The conference opened with a performance from a collective group of students who came from several different schools. The skit was entitled, Listen to Me, and the skit highlighted the difference of students and the diversity of their worlds. And this spectacular performance was coordinated by Mrs. Tamara Smith from Kellum High School. The second day of the conference was just as engaging and robust, opening with a conversation that talked about items that achieve with ex extraordinary, extraordinary outcomes. From that conversation, Mr. Merrill gave us one of his achievements through a class crisis that's turned into a lasting relationship between teacher and student and a teachable moment for him and Assistant Principal Perez Gatlin gave us a sermonic interpretation of students who are not one-dimensional, but the sum value of a mosaic piece waiting to be explored. I would like to thank Dr. Don Roberts and your staff for a job well done in organizing the first ever Regional Two Conference, and it was spectacular and the professional training day for the three days we were there. I came away hopeful that this conference is a start of many more to come and that the Virginia Beach City Public Schools are on the right path and continue to move forward on the road of education, excellence through equity. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mrs. Fulton. Any other comments, Mrs. Rye? Yeah, to, piggy, to piggyback on Mrs. Mrs. Felton's remarks, I just wanted to share that when, as I attended uh, the, the, the opening session, uh, I did the same thing I did in Boston when I attended the National School Board Conference and the, the two equity sessions with prominent national speakers. And what I did was look at the faces of these administrators and the audiences. And I saw administrators, you know, who just, Generally, even at the national conference, it was standing room only. We have administrators nationally, and, and now we know regionally, that just truly are committed to this. You know, a lot of people are banging their heads against the wall in some cases, and I think just coming together and to see all the commitment in the faces of, of our educators and working together uh, for this very noble mission and vision and goal. 
Thank you very much. We uh, will remain in our places for uh, non-agenda comments. The formal meeting is adjourned. <laughs>